our next report is funnels. And funnels is really one of the most popular mixed panel reports uh, they offer and really one of the things that companies really are taken back uh, by and that they really want to use. Uh, so funnels is a way for us to look at the drop-off in between steps. Uh, so it's maybe an onboarding funnel or it be a series of actions that you're looking at within your product. In an e-commerce site, this might be just you know your checkout funnel, right? Uh, and we start by, in this case, we have, we have a funnel example here with five steps, right? And we can see how many people do each step, right? And we see the, the, the conversion rate, right? So 7% of all these users went to step two, and then so on and so on and so on until we get to the final step. And we get a, a total conversion rate here of, of 5% for the entire funnel. Now where, where it gets quite handy is really when it comes time to build these funnels. So all these bundles can be, they can be built on the fly and it makes sense will calculate the data for you on the fly. So you can quickly create funnels, tweak them, remove steps, add steps and so on. Uh, there's a few things to, to understand here. Each step is an event that you're tracking and you can of course filter that event by any of the event properties or people properties that you're tracking. So you can have very exclusive funnels. For example, you may wanna look at a certain uh, product usage behavior funnel but only for Android users. So you can do that by filtering uh, at one of the steps. In here, we know the first step has a filter, the other ones don't, right? And we can, of course, reorder steps quite easily, or we can add new steps or remove steps. Yeah, so it's quite handy. Uh, there's a few other special functions that we that we can look at for understanding funnels. One is exclusion of steps. Uh, this is actually relatively new in Mixpanel, but we can exclude events in between steps. So for example, um, the use case I've seen a lot for this is say, uh, we wanna look at users who upgraded, who became paying subscribers, but they didn't click on, um, on like a upgrade email notification. So we would say, you know, between like step two and three, before between them doing something and upgrading, let's exclude any users who actually view those upgrade notifications. So we only look at users who sort of organically upgraded, that kind of thing. Uh, so we can have tons of exclusion steps at any at any of the point in between steps. Uh, it's just a, a handy way to to remove uh, certain variables from affecting the, the funnel that you're looking at. Now, one thing to understand, or really the biggest thing to understand in, in mixed funnel funnels, is the way that mixed funnel counts conversions, right? So if we go back here, uh, mixed funnel uses a, a loose ordering uh, format for their funnels, which means that you know this is step one, two, three, four, five you just have to complete the steps in that order to be counted. Now, they might do step one, step two, some random event here that's not in this funnel, and then come back and do step three, four, and five, and they'll be counted, that's fine. But something that typically happens with clients and really throws them off is they'll have users who do step one, step two, they might skip step three altogether, and then go step four and step five, that user will appear in the first two steps, but since they didn't complete step three, they don't, they don't appear here, which means they don't appear in step four and five, right? Uh, this is something that other products, uh, competitors in Mexico do support in some way, you know, the ability to have flexible funnels to, to have, you know, for users to complete that. I, I imagine that that might be part of their roadmap in the future, but for now, it's something to keep in mind. It's common, or you know, I find it very common that clients will create a funnel that seems simple to them, that seems, oh, you know, this is the four steps, and they look at the final number within the date range and they're like, uh, that's off. You know, that's it's off by quite a bit. We're supposed to have 150 conversions and we only have 25. So typically a lot of that comes down to, the, to actually the order in the steps that maybe some users did not go through the steps as they imagine it, which on the plus side is a great starting point because it might mean that they don't really understand or they might not really understand how the product works or how users are actually using the product, right? They might be expecting users to go through a series of steps, but the actual reality might be different. Uh, so they'll need to play around a little bit with the funnels uh, to get a better sense of that. If you go back to sense here, just to finish up a few things, by default, all funnels use uniques. So it really, it focuses on, on using users. And this is typically by, by the user ID uh, when mixed funnel calls a distinct ID. Um, but you do have an option to just look at total conversions, right? You might have certain funnels, uh, maybe not like an onboarding funnel that a user might do only once, but other funnels, maybe if your app, you know, let's say it's like a, a checkout full or an app or something like that, uh, where you start completing this funnel multiple times in any given date range. So this gives you a chance to look at that. So look at all the total conversions and not just uh, individual users, right? We can, of course, use cohorts here, which we'll cover in another video. And the other thing that's also important to understand is conversion window. 
So typically by default, we'll, we'll have a 30-day conversion window, but we can actually make this seconds, minutes, weeks, or months. Um, but it's critical to make this appropriate for whatever you're looking at, right? If you have a, a product funnel where you're expecting users to really complete it in minutes, right? Um, you should really use that. Uh, what tends to happen is if you make the conversion window too long, you will have users eventually who somehow start a funnel and they'll come back 25 days later and complete it. Uh, but those can really mess up a little bit some of your averages, some of your attempt conversion windows and so on, and you might end up with some weird outliers. Uh, so this is just an easy way to ensure that conversion window is set properly. And then lastly, also relatively neat to the funnels report is the ability to hold a property constant. Uh, it's a little bit more advanced, but the idea is you can take a, an event property and you'll, you can hold the value constant throughout the entire funnel uh, from the first time it's seen. Um, the use case I've seen here and these I've seen Mixon I'll talk about is uh, like an e-commerce store and you add an item to a cart, so you want to hold uh, that value, that item that was added uh, as, a, as, a, as an event property, and you want to hold that constant as the user completes other actions in the site in the funnel. Um, so that's, uh, that's something that, that could be helpful if, if that's something you're looking at. Down here, right, we have our funnel. Uh, we can also filter a funnel here on the fly. So we can really filter by any of the properties that we were used to, right? So if we take the, the country property from before, and we'll take the people property here. Then Mix Funnel will, will filter our funnel and will give us the same step breakdown by country, right? So it's quite handy to be able to start slicing and, and dicing this funnel uh, to see how conversion rates change depending on different uh, segmentations that we're, that we're using. Then we here we see you know we see the overall conversion rate for this funnel and how that's changing over time, right? If, is it, if it's trending upwards or downwards, uh, if it's really changing, actually, uh, this is about a month. So we actually we might better see it for something like a week, a week by week breakdown, right? And then the the time to convert. Uh, so this is where we can see some of the what I was talking about before, right? Uh, we can see that really the bulk of the conversions happen in less than two days. So really having a 30-day a conversion window might not really make sense here, right? We really might want to have a 48-hour conversion window or a two-day conversion window to really capture the bulk of what we care about uh, in terms of user conversions here. And like anything else, we can you know we can duplicate this funnel. We can um, download the data. We can add to dashboard, which we'll cover in another video. Uh, but that's that's really it. Very flexible report, and really the ability to build those funnels, build them and destroy them, and build them and destroy them, um, and analyze what's going on is is um, is really the quite critical, right? Uh, as a way to analyze what's going on uh, within your product.